Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we're going to talk about representations of 3D figures. We're going to discuss the isometric views and then also what cross sections are. So follow along with me as we take a look. So first of all, I need you to know that when you see dots like this, it's not a standard grid. It's not what you would see, let's say, on a coordinate plane if you had were plotting points. This is called isometric dot paper. And what you'll actually see is it's a series of dots that vertically are spaced out one unit in length. And then the next column you'll see of those dots is shifted like at the halfway point. And actually each one of these three dots, if you take a look at it, forms a little equilateral triangle. We use this isometric dot paper to make 3D drawings. So it really helps us when we're able to label out a length, a width, and then a height of a figure using this dot paper. Now, dot to dot is one unit. So I'm going to just say diagonally. So if I started at this top left point and I went here, that is one unit in length. This is also one unit of length. So is this. This is also one unit of length. So you have a length, a unit of length this way, this way, and this way. Now, horizontally from dot to dot that is not one unit so we just have to know that it's about using length width and then height so here it says using the isometric dot paper sketch a cube with a side length of three units so that would mean i would need to make three units so three units would mean that i would start at a point and i would go out one two three units and that would look like that would look like this. If I wanted to create a height of three units, one, two, three. So notice I used four dots to create three units because a unit is from point to point. It's that segment. So one, two, three. Now a cube has all lengths of three. So the height is three. If I wanted to make the length of three, I would go out one, two, three units. The width is also three. So I'm gonna go out to the other side. One, two, three. Now maybe at this point with a height of three, a length of three and a width of three, you can start to see where this cube is gonna come from. Now I'm gonna replicate that height here and here. I think you can really now see where the cube is gonna be coming together. And I'm gonna then replicate my, my width and my length. So that length here gets replicated. My width also is going to get replicated and it's going to end up creating this cube. Now you could look at this cube and say you're looking at it from the left, from the right, you could see at the top of the cube. We can't see behind the cube. Um, you could imagine that the cube is kind of, you know, see-through, however you visualize it, but this is how you would draw that in isometric dot paper. Now cross sections. Cross sections are when we take a 3D figure any 3D figure, and we basically just slice a plane right through it. We can slice a plane horizontally, we can slice a plane vertically, we can do one diagonally, and in any direction diagonally, and at any angle or degree. So here I have a, just a regular cylinder, okay? And again, that cross section here is a definition, the intersection of a three-dimensional figure and a plane described as a shape. So you have to imagine if you were to take a piece of paper and slice it, Okay, so that piece of paper is a plane, and slice it through some 3D figure. Think about what the cut shape would actually look like from that 3D figure. So here, if I have a cylinder, and I was to take a piece of paper and cut that cylinder right down the middle. Imagine taking a can and a knife and cutting that can right down the middle. And when you split the can open, what shape do you then see from that can? Think about it you should be seeing a rectangle. So if I cut, and that's a plane, that's not my exact cut, that blue um, line would represent the plane. If I sliced it that way, I'm gonna end up having a rectangle. What would happen if I took a plane and I sliced it horizontally? If I took a plane and I sliced a cylinder horizontally and I cut a can this way instead, that shape would be a circle. So you're not going to have always the same shapes. They're going to be different depending on where the plane is actually cutting through. So we're gonna take a look at some more isometric dot drawings. 
Um, please follow along, draw these with me. If you wanna stop right now and see if you can draw them on your own because you feel like you get it, that's great. Otherwise, just simply follow along. Here it says a rectangular prism with a length of three units, a width of two units, and a height of four units. So we just did a cube before, so all the lengths were the same. Now obviously there's gonna be three different lengths here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with a length of three units. So out one, two, three units. Again, we're along that diagonal. It's using four dots because the segments are in between. I'm gonna go ahead and do a width of two. So I'm gonna go out three this way and then two units this way. And now a height of four. So height is gonna be our vertical. So height of four from here, from the center, is gonna go out four units up. One, two, three, four. Okay, now I have a, basically the structure I now need to duplicate. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my height at my endpoints of those segments. I'm gonna duplicate my length and width here until I create that rectangular prism. A triangular prism with a base of three units, a width of four units, and a height of five units. So the base of a triangular prism is a triangle. So I need to create a triangle that's got dimensions of three by four. So three by four and a height of five units. So I'm gonna go up five units from the center here or where that intersection is. But I'm not gonna fully create this because this is a rectangular prism. So imagine I'm still going to replicate my height. I'm still going to replicate the width and the length, but instead of extending this and making a rectangular prism, I'm simply just connecting those endpoints and I would have a triangular prism. It almost looks like a big wedge of cake or a big wedge of cheese, a big slice. Last one, we're gonna make two cubes, just like I made before a cube with lengths of three on each side. We're gonna make two cubes, one with a length, side length of one and one with a side length of two on the same diagram here. So let's go ahead for the one with sides of one. So this could be my height, my length, and my width, okay? And if I created a cube of a side length of two, I could replicate my three sides with my height, connect those points to units in every direction, and that would be it. So you can really see these cubes. You can see you have sides of one. This looks like a perfect little die. Imagine you had dice. This would be one of them. Here with segments of two, you can see there's four units of area on each side. One, two, three, four. If you're looking at the values inside of that side. Now, cross sections. Here I have a cube. If I was to cut this cube horizontally, horizontal to the base, that cross section would be a square. So imagine you take a cube, you slice the cube right down the middle, that's a picture of that, what you cut, that like, imagine you had like a square orange somehow, I don't know, and you cut that right in half, you're gonna have a square as the cut port part that's facing up. But what if you took a plane at a 45 degree angle? So this would be horizontal, this would be vertical, that would be 90 degrees if it was perfectly in that form. So 45 is halfway through. So imagine you took the top points of the box here and you cut it directly to the diagonal points here, 45 degrees. So it could be this way, it could be this way. And you cut that figure diagonally. Now, if I cut that figure diagonally, I'm still gonna have my segment at the top of this length, my segment at the bottom of this length here but it's not going to be perfectly a square anymore because the diagonal of the cut is always longer than a side because that diagonal is actually the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So the shape that actually occurs here is a rectangle. It's going to have longer sides along the diagonal cut and then you have your congruent sides at either end of the square, the original square shape. A cone plain horizontal, if I took an ice cream cone and I sliced it right down the middle horizontally, that would be a circle. If I took a cone and I sliced it vertically, now think about that, if you took an ice cream cone, put it upside down on a table, sliced it right down the middle, and then you looked at one of those halves, yes, it would be half a cone, but the outside image would be 
a triangle. Okay, if I slice it right down the middle, it would be a triangle. A sphere, picture like a basketball. I always think of a basketball when I look at a sphere every single time. If I cut it horizontally, it would be a circle. If I cut it vertically, whether it's through the center, like I said, mentioned in this one here, or it's not through the center, it really doesn't matter. It's still always going to be a circle. The different case would be if I had a watermelon. If I had a watermelon, let's say, more of an oblong figure, and I cut it down the middle this way, it may appear as a circle, but then think if I took that watermelon and I sliced it this way, I would then have an oval. So that wouldn't be the case for a basketball. You would have a circle no matter where you cut that figure. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful.